a little bit different. Nice job. Hey, Chub. Jenna, what do you reckon? Yeah. Two different faces? They do. Yeah. This one chuckles and that one growls. Oh, there you go. Hi, everyone. Um, it's been a while since I've done a blog on my own. Um, Rick's on the other side of the camera, just so I don't forget where I'm up to. Um, I've done a couple of blogs where I've had my heated blanket on my lap with the dolls and there's been a few blogs where a few videos where people have noticed that my ability to walk hasn't been great um, we put up a video last year that um, with me with the um, brain monitoring on and that was all to find a solution to why I'm not very well. We've done a couple of blogs and a couple of videos where I haven't been very well and that's been addressed in the video but we haven't actually told everyone what's actually wrong because we didn't know. About three months ago I got a diagnosis of why my walking has deteriorated and why my balance is absolute shot to shit and he can edit that out if he wants but it is it's shot to shit I can't walk um, I walk with a stick there are days where I can't get out of bed I have chronic fatigue um, there are days where I'm in that much pain I can't move and we had to stop doing what we love doing in order to find out what the hell was wrong with me and by stopping, it was making both Rick and I really quite annoyed because we, we are so used to doing what we do and we love what we do. So after about, after a whole lot of scans and tests and x-rays and MRIs and examinations and all sorts of stuff with specialists, They've now diagnosed me with what's called FND, which is an acronym for Functional Neurological Disorder, which is common, but it's not well known. It's one of the most common reasons why people go see a neurologist. It's very hard to diagnose because FND looks like every other neurological condition you can think of. So it can look like Parkinson's, it can look like MS, it can look Tourette's. like it can look like Tourette's, it can look like you've had a stroke. Because what causes it isn't physiological. They can't find the reason. It's a physiological response. It's a physical response, but they don't know the cause. So basically FND is a processing issue disorder between your nervous system not working the way it should your brain not being able to interpret it's kind of like your brain's not your nervous system's not able to interpret what your brain is telling it and therefore the body can't act accordingly so so the brain's not interpreting the pain properly. well it's not so much pain the brain the the nervous system is sending a message to the brain, but the brain can't make any hide nor hair of it. So it's interpreting that signal as pain. Whether it's pain or not, it's the only thing it can recognize. So I'm in a lot of pain. Um, it, FND has a whole lot of symptoms. It has symptoms of chronic pain. It has symptoms of one-sided weakness so I have my left side my right side is actually very weak which is why I'm having walking issues because my right my le my right leg doesn't work properly so it's my right side that has the issue um, which is the side I have my stick you've seen me walking around in the videos with my stick Jack and we call him Jack because it's got a rabbit's head on it I think a lot of people have seen Jack um, because I didn't want a stick that made me look like a little old lady because I'm not not in my head anyway 
So I tell people, yeah, I tell people that FND is like trying to deal with a government department because one department doesn't talk to the other department. They want you to do everything online. All the links are broken. No one will answer the phone and there's no interpreter. So your brain can't, your nervous system does not know how to interpret the signals that the brain is telling it, so therefore the body can't act accordingly. I have what we now realise, we thought they were epileptic seizures because I am epileptic. Um, now we are calling them tics because it mimics Tourette syndrome. So I tick, I spasm, my arms go everywhere, I, I, I vocalise, I do all that sort of stuff. And that is my body's reaction to pain. So when my pain levels get too high, I start ticking and spasming because my body doesn't know what to do. Um, in saying that, does it stop me from doing the spiritual work I do? We are working around it. I've had to change the way I work. I've had to be more selective. We both have had to be more selective as to what cases we take on. Um, because if you can imagine if there is something negative somewhere where we go, I'm a pretty prime target. We've found that things won't, that negative energies won't go after Rick at all, but they'll definitely try and have a go with me. So my guides and my protection has had to change in order to keep myself safe. So I actually have a guide that I trans channel. So if the negative energy is physically trying to hurt me, my guide will jump in and it won't be me that deals with it, it'll be her. And there's one video I think where you, we briefly caught Jeanette, my guide, on video while I was channeling. Um, a trance channel is something that either a medium can do or they can't. Um, to do it safely takes a lot of skill. You've got to be very connected with your guides. You've got your guides have got to be strong enough to push out anything that won't follow the rules. We had an incident. Um, we went somewhere, we weren't even doing anything spiritual, but we had an incident and something tried to connect and my guides had to push, push it out. So we're a little bit more selective of where we go and what we do and how we do it spiritually. Walking. Yeah, I can't walk. <laughs> Walking is a massive problem. I, it's not that I can't walk, it's just I forget how to do it sometimes. <laughs> And I can't walk as far as what someone my age was, would be able to. Um, I'm 44, so there should be no reason why I can't walk. But because I have trouble, my brain is constantly telling me I'm in pain. And it is, it is a legit pain. It's not, it's not psychosomatic. It's not all in my head. I am in pain. It is a legit pain and it's horrible and it, I cannot walk as a result of that because my legs give out. FND is more common in people who have a, already have a neurological issue. I have epilepsy so if there is already a glitch in the in the matrix so to speak then um it's more likely that fnd will will develop um the glitch becomes permanent which is why the symptoms don't go away um, my doctors and i have probably we probably think i've probably had this since i was 14 years old and it went undiagnosed for a very long time and it's only now that the symptoms have become more, more permanent that we've been able to establish what it exactly is. Um, there are support groups, there are, you can Google FND and there's a stack of information. 
but the one thing in that information is how to treat it because they don't know. It can be more common also in people who have had some kind of trauma. So people have been in abusive relationships, children who have been in domestic violence situations. Um, it can be triggered by an illness. You know, you can break your leg, you can break your arm, you can have a long-term illness. You can have, there's a lady that I know who got glandular fever and it ended up as FND. Mine is linked to trauma. I also have PTSD as a result of a whole bunch of stuff, which I won't go into. But they believe my FND is, is linked to the PTSD, um, which means a lot of the treatment is to do with cognitive behavioural therapy and talking, sitting around talking and trying to work out how to deal with stress so that your pain levels don't get to the point where you can't get out of bed. Um, or you, can, you can't work. I'm not capable of holding down a job. I've never been capable of holding down a job. I work spiritually. I work with my dolls. Rick and I w work spiritually with Black Rose. Um, the treatment is basically you deal with the symptoms, you treat the symptoms. So I'm on, I'm per permanently on painkillers um, so I can get through the day. Um, I've been on those painkillers for about three years now because I didn't know what it was. I've had two surgeries thinking that it was one thing and it wasn't. The last surgery resulted in me not being, ha being able to have any more children. So they thought that might have been the problem. The truth is that um, it's a lifelong condition. It's not going to go away. It's not going to get... It can get better to a point. Some people go into remission. Some people are able to kind of retrain their brain and remove the glitch. Sorry, Amber. Um, this is Amber. I think I've met, I think I've introduced Amber before. Um, and some people, the glitch stays. Whether you can retrain the brain depends on the time between the onset of symptoms, when you're diagnosed and when you start treatment. It's taken five years for me to get a diagnosis. Um, the treatment at the moment is treat the symptoms. Will it get worse? There are people who have ended up in the paralysis has got that bad and the pain has got that bad that they end up in a wheelchair or they end up on a walker. Um, so that's a possibility. Um, Rick and I have had to come to terms with that and so has my daughter, that you know it is a possibility that it will get to the point where I end up in a wheelchair. Um, I'm hoping that's not the case, but it will be, a, it'll be a full, a four wheel drive wheelchair and I'll be able to still go anywhere I want to go because I'm not freaking staying at home. The symptoms of FND are few and far between. It can be anywhere from chronic pain. It can be numbness in your hands and feet, which I get. It can be chronic headaches. It can be bowel and bladder issues. It can be, like I said, weakness usually down one side. It can be paralysis. It can be mobility issues, balance issues. Um, it can be shaking, tremor, spasms. I look at the list of F, we've looked at the list of FND with my doctors and I've got most of them. Um, the only bit I haven't ended, I haven't ended up in a wheelchair yet and I'm determined not to do that.
for me, it's been, um, it was a hard diagnosis to accept. Um, it took me a while to be able to go, yeah, okay, I agree with that. Um, I've been treated in the past like a crazy person. I've been told that, you know, what I was feeling was all in my head. And that is pretty much the worst thing you can tell anybody with FND because it isn't in their head. You are, you are in pain. It can affect your eyesight. There are days where I can't see properly. I woke up the other day and I couldn't see... I couldn't read the packet, the writing on the packet of my painkillers. Um, it can affect your hearing. There's days I wake up and I can't hear Rick talking to me. And then that'll go away. It's sensory issues. You, light sensitivity, noise sensitivity, um, sensitivity to touch. So you, there are days where I can't wear the clothes I want to wear because they don't feel right. And anyone out there who's got kids with ADHD or autism would know what those sensory issues are like because there are days where I sit here in my knickers and my singlet top, my, my knee-high socks and my Ugg boots and a cardigan because I can't deal with anything else. Um, because it feels wrong. It hurts. My skin physically feels like it's on fire. Um... My hands especially, you may have noticed in a couple of the videos I've started to wear gloves, fingerless gloves. My hands ache constantly. Um, if I don't have the gloves on when I go out, I can't use, my hands won't work. Um, I can't hold my stick. Um, I drop things, like my hands just let go. They don't, the messages from my brain through the nervous system to my hands gets um, interrupted and I drop things. I knock things over. I've, I've already got an issue with spatial awareness and it's gotten so much worse. It's commonplace for me to just knock over my, my can of coke or my, you know, if I'm painting, knock over the water or if I'm doing something with the dolls. Um, I've had to choose when I restore my, restore the dolls because I can't hold the forceps I need to be able to restring the dolls. Um, I've had to, it's a life long disorder. It's, it's functional neurological disorder, but there is nothing functional about it. The only thing functional about it is they can't find the dysfunction in it. There's nothing functional about it. And Rick's just noticed that my leg has started to twitch. Um, because I'm in pain, like I'm sitting here in my pajamas and my leg, it's not usually my right, my left leg, it's usually my right leg, but I've got Amber sitting on my right leg, who's, this is Amber, I don't know whether I've introduced, have I introduced Amber? This is Amber, she's one of the dollies that I bought, I did an ex, a psychic and paranormal expo last year. And that's the story in itself. That's another story time. And um, from the money that I got from that, I bought Amber. She was on Marketplace and she needed a home. And she's one of the more precious, she's one of the more cuddly dolly spirit we have. Amber's got the spirit of a young girl with Down syndrome. And she's a healer. She's all love. And she's the best, she's one of the best you can pick up and give a cuddle to when you're feeling like crap. Because she's a healer, she wants to heal, she wants to make people happy. And she's a beautiful little spirit. So she's sitting with me today because... She soothes us all. She does. And if you've ever met anybody with Down Syndrome, they're people that are just full of love. And they're full of happiness. And they're gifts to the world, people with Down Syndrome. And, and that's that's another thing, another story on its own. What spirited dolls can do, yeah, or do do for people. Yeah, Amber's a healer. My daughter, 
there's probably a handful of dolls my daughter will pick come and pick up when she's feeling crap and amber she bought amber the jumper that she's wearing so um, hold on to your binky so she's got a bluey jumper on bluey hoodie bluey and bingo and anyone who doesn't know bluey you need to google it because it's the best show ever it's a kids show and it's very Australian and my daughter bought her the bluey jumper and she's also got a toy bluey that talks that my daughter bought her um, so to answer the question that we've had we've had a few people ask on a number of videos is Beth okay is she all right Rick has said oh Beth's not doing so well today we've only really had the diagnosis for what, two or three months and um, there goes the ticking and I usually don't broadcast when I'm feeling like this normally I wait until things settle down but this pretty much is the focus of the video and anyone who's watched my vlogs will know that I don't shy away from the truth I don't shy away from what is me I put a video up a couple of days after I lost my assistant's dog no, it was a month after I lost my assistant's dog cruiser and it was raw and it was real um, on that front we are expecting I applied for another dog the organization smart pups assistance dogs is very aware of um, my new diagnosis and they're working with it look at the shaking in the yeah. right yeah and there we go again. yeah it's because we went usually out means this is uh, medication time yeah oh we'll see how it goes now yeah because it's also i'm also in pain so i can't shake it hurts the shaking hurts the ticks hurt because i'm already in pain but the um we will be getting another dog i will be getting another dog um and that dog will be placed with us towards the end of this year or early next year we are traveling up to queensland to visit the smart pups hq to meet the new recruits to see which ones i which ones i um connect with and we will go from there it's been a very hard road without cruiser i had him for so long but we're hoping that once i get my new dog that the symptoms will decrease a little bit because it's very stressful for me to go out in public and it always has been and stress tends to exacerbate the issue so it's very much a case of you deal with the cards that the universe has given you because you got no choice and I know there are a few there are people out there who are going to say oh you're such an inspiration and you're so fantastic and but what other choice do you have you know you can lie down and curl up in a ball and wish for it to go away and and I've done that I've had moments like that I've had some very dark moments over the last couple of couple of months where I've just wanted it to go away and I've just wanted I don't see the point in being here and I'll be perfectly honest with you um it mood changer too it does it affects your mood yeah, it affects changer it affects your move you can Anxieties. get anxiety and depression with it and when you go from someone who has been exceptionally active I've ha I had epilepsy I was diagnosed with epilepsy when I was 12 if I wanted to go somewhere I'd walk because I've never held a driver's license I can't have a driver's license yeah we're lucky if you can do 200 yards in the gardens yeah. 
Yeah, and now I'm lucky if I can get from the lounge to the bloody bathroom on time. Um, I can't stand up to have a shower. I have to sit down. We've got a makeshift, sh sh we've got a fold-up chair in the shower. I can't wash my own hair. Um, my daughter cuts my hair for me. A lot of the time I can't brush my hair. We've toyed with the idea of me cutting my hair off and everybody around me is just mortified at the idea of that. So I've got people who will help me brush my hair and will help me wash my hair. Um, some days I can get in the shower fine but I can't get out and some days I'll be in the shower. I've had moments where I've been in the shower to try and stop the ticking and try and stop the pain and I've nearly put my head through the sh backwards through the glass shower screen because I've slammed my head into the shower screen. We did a video a few a few weeks ago at, was it Smythesdale Cemetery? Mm -hmm. We did. And I was walking around, taking my time. I had BB with me because then, again, BB's a healer. BB's the spirit of a young lady with cerebral palsy, or a middle-aged lady with cerebral palsy. She's very young at heart. And so when I can't take the heavy dolls out because these dolls are all weighted, all the um, reborns are weighted, I take Beebs with me because she's light. She's cheeky. But she can hold her own if she if a spirit comes near BB and she doesn't want it there, she'll tell it to go away. We did that and then we got back in the car. And by the time we got in to the gates down the driveway of that cemetery, to the gates I was ticking by the time we stopped at the gallows because I couldn't get out of the car because I couldn't walk and Rick got back Rick got back into the car we were about to drive away and I had a massive tick and my head through flew across and hit the passenger side window so I carry medication with me because the medication stops the ticking. I've had that medication because it also stops my seizures. So when we do these videos and you see me wandering around and you see me, you know, a little bit wobbly or whatever, depends on how long we've, how long in the day it's been. We can still do road trips. We can still do three cemeteries in the one day if we want to. But by the third cemetery, my nervous system is just exhausted. My body's exhausted. I did a um, photo shoot for the um, local goth festival. It was a lot of fun. And we did a video not long after I'd finished that, that photo shoot. That photo shoot went for, the, for a good five, six hours, I think. I took Walt with me. He's another one of my... My spirit dolls, he looks like a zombie. He's probably the most gothic doll I have. Um, I didn't take Wolf out at the first half of the, the, the shoot. He stayed in the car. But by the second part of the shoot, I needed him partly because I was tired, partly because I was in pain, and partly because the reason my dolls and I get on so well is because we heal each other. We give each other something. You know, I give them a place to be and a safe place to fall. But they know I'm not well. The dolly spirit know that I'm not well. Because a lot of the do dolly spirit are not well. A lot of the dolly spirit have issues. Um, a lot of the do dolly spirit have disabilities. And they get something in return and I get something. When I need to take the dolls out, they are happy to come with me because they know what it's like. BB, like I said, she's, a, she's the spirit of a lady with cerebral palsy whose energy is quite young. Wolf had a muscle skeletal um, issue disorder when he was on earth and he wolf actually th was treated like a monster so he thought he was his full name is wolfgang but i don't call him wolfgang i call him wolf because wolves are strong powerful animals they're 
leaders. They look after their own. They look after their family. And he needed, he needed something that wasn't the label that he was given. The white wolf is also Rick's spirit animal, so wolf is very connected to Rick. So the dolls give back. It's a two-way street. Amber's just love and healing and, you know, she just wants to make you okay, which is why she's sitting on my leg today. But then you've got Annika and Anna, who are my Siamese twins, and they're just beautiful. <laughs> but when you see us doing those videos and you see how, and people comment, you know, I look, I look tired, it's because I am tired. But I'm not going to give up what I love doing. We just have to find a different way of doing it. So, if you want to know more about FND, Google it. There are a lot of really good videos on YouTube that explain the condition really well. There's a lot of, there's a few um, support groups out there. There's not a lot of treatment because the treatment is physiotherapy. Look, if you want to know more about FND, Google it. There are a lot of really good videos on YouTube explaining the condition. There are a lot of really good websites out there that explain it in more detail. There are, there's a few there's not many, but there's a few um, support groups out there. One that springs to mind is Hope, I think it's called. It's a, it goes into the, it's a, a, my brain's not working. It's a support group, but it's also um, looks into the research. That's another, um, <laughs> that's another side of uh, symptom of FND. You lose your words. It affects you cognitively. Um, it affects the way you think. It affects the way you speak. It can slow your speech. It can affect your memory. It can affect you. Oh, my memory is absolute shit. Um, and it's true. It can affect. It can affect your speech. There are a few videos I've done where my speech has been slurring. We now know that rather than that being the epilepsy, it's the FND. So it can cause seizures. Um, I have, like I said, I have epilepsy and we have had to learn the difference between the epileptic seizures that I have and the FND seizures and they're not neurologically based. There is nothing wrong with your brain. It's when emotionally you go into overload and your brain shuts down. So it's like, it, it's like if there's a power surge and it flicks a safety switch, a circuit breaker. Except that power surge is an emotional, is emotional um, energy. It's an emotional thing. I find that when I'm a lot of my really hefty um, see, um, symptoms are triggered because I'm tired and because I. Um, I am emotional and I am in pain and I have had enough for the day and I have, you know, I am losing it emotionally. I have those seizures, but they're not like the seizures I have when I have an epileptic seizure. And we've had to learn to define between the two. I don't know whether you can see, but my cat Griffin's curled up in front of me. And Griffin, this is Griff, he's a sook, but Griffin, Griffin's a Tonkinese cat, so that's when you cross a Burmese with a Siamese. And he senses when you're not well either. Yeah, he does. Cats are really good at, cats are healers, whereas cats will not absorb, they will, well they'll absorb but they'll let it go. 
dogs hang on to it because they love you so much they just don't want anything to hurt you cats are a little bit more independent and cruiser worked with me for a long time and part of the reason he got as sick as he did was because he was constantly absorbing all of the pain and all of the seizures and all everything that i was having he wanted me to be okay and spiritually that's what dogs do they love there's a saying that says a dog is the only creature on earth that loves someone else apart from themselves more than themselves and cruiser did so to answer the question no i'm not okay yes there's something wrong no it's not going to stop me from doing what we're doing yes we have to change the way we do it but i'm not going anywhere not yet my guides keep telling me they've got to deal with covid first and then i can cross over and they're still dealing with covid they keep telling me one catastrophe at a time so until they're ready for this catastrophe they're not going to let me cross over so Google FND, functional neurological disorder. There's nothing functional about it other than they don't know what causes it. But we're still here. And I just want to say thank you to everybody for their support and those comments of concern and the ones telling me to be okay and to hang in there. It's been really, I, I appreciate it. Because some days, I don't tend to read a lot of the comments on the channel. The channel is Rick's thing. But when I do read it, and it does, there are people who are concerned and they're hoping that I get better and they're asking Rick if I'm okay. I really do appreciate it. We both do. And yes, when I get my new dog, I will introduce him to everybody. Him, he, she, them, they. Take care, everybody. Bye.